Have you ever thought about how memory works? Like how you'll hear something or see something or smell or taste or feel something and it's like your mind goes back to a specific moment in time. And when you're back in that moment, it's like you can recall very specific details about it. Like anytime I smell chocolate chip cookies, it reminds me of being at my grandmother's house, standing in the kitchen, looking at her with her red apron on baking cookies. And I remember I'd sit on the floor playing with these wood blocks and the world felt safe and warm and happy. And that was like 30 years ago. But that smell triggers something that makes me feel like it was yesterday. Or how about when you see something and it triggers other senses? Like I could probably show you a Christmas tree and you probably know what it smells like. Or I can show you this bell and you know what it sounds like even if I'm not ringing it. Or I can play this video with no sound on and you probably know every word and sound that is being played. Could you hear it? Yeah, it's because your senses, your sight and sound and smell and hearing and touch, it works hand in hand with our memories. And this is why art is so powerful. And it's why it's so cool that you're at WimCat right now getting to create. Because what you dream up here is going to have a very real impact on other people's brains when they observe and experience what you create. You're going to affect their memories. Let me explain. We have specialized cells found throughout our bodies called sensory receptors that respond to external stimuli or triggers. For instance, photoreceptors in the retina of our eyes capture light and it converts it into neural signals, signals within our brains, while olfactory receptors in our noses detect different smells. And when our senses are activated, they instantly trigger a series of events inside of our brains. For example, when you see a beautiful sunset, photoreceptors in your eyes send signals to your brain brain. This sensory information is processed and parts of your brain associated with sight. The brain tries to make sense out of what it captured, like what colors it saw or shapes or whatever else your eyes picked up. And then it sends that information to a part of your brain called the hippocampus. This is where memories are formed. Think of the hippocampus as a supercomputer bridge inside of your brain. It's like a connection point between all the stuff you sense, like what you see, touch, hear, taste, and smell, and your brain's storage and memory system. This bridge is the key to creating something called episodic memories. These are memories that are super personal and specific to a particular moment or experience in your life. When you have a memorable experience, like a special family gathering or something, your senses kick into action. Let's say there's delicious food being cooked and the smell wafts through the air. Your nose detects that smell, but it also processes the warmth and happiness of the event. Your brain links all of these things together, like connecting puzzle pieces. It's not just about the smell, it's about the emotions, the people, the whole scene that's unfolding while you are smelling. And that's what makes memory so strong and emotional, like a powerful scene in a movie. It's the hippocampus, it's the mastermind behind all of it, etching these memories into your brain. So that's why when you smell that food again, even years later, all of those wonderful feelings and memories come flooding back. It's powerful. And so when you create something with the goal of it being memorable, like you want people to remember what you make and hold on to it, you want them to turn on their hippocampuses, or hippocampi, whatever you want to call it, if you want that to happen, one of the best ways to do this is to engage their senses.